everyone. I'm Janine Malone. And I'm Kristen Ciccolini. And you're listening to It's Just a Phase. Each week, we'll bring you inspiring and informative conversations about honoring the different cycles of life, covering topics of health and wellness, moon phases, astrology, witchcraft, feminism, and more so you can superpower your well-being and live your best life. And we're living our best lives. Living our best life. <laughs> <laughs> we are because we have a very exciting show for you guys today. We're interviewing one of our favorite witches, Sarah Potter. You may know her on Instagram as I am Sarah Potter. She's a professional tarot reader, color magic practitioner. Um, she's many magical things. And Janine and I met her last summer. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, right? Yeah. God, that was so long ago. <laughs> it feels um, like a decade ago, but yes, yeah. last year. <laughs> um, at the same event where Janine and I met. And yes. um, we sat next to each other and experienced Sarah magic, or Sarah's magic for the first time, which she, she did like a color magic visualization, which we'll talk about when you hear the interview. And it was a great interview. But before we get into that, before you hear that, we have the cosmic update. So Janine, what's happening this week? Well, we have a full moon in Aries on October 1st. Um, Yes, we have a lot of fire energy with that. Aries being ruled by being a fire sign and the full moon being associated with fire. Um, Interesting fact, fun fact about October is that actually the first and the 31st, so the first day and the last day of October are both full moons. So there's a lot of energy happening um, mm. throughout this month. So that's kind of an interesting way to kick it off. And, you know, Aries is a fire sign. It's the first of the Zodiac. So if you're, you know, you're like me <laughs> potentially, and you've been eagerly awaiting an invitation to begin a new chapter or like start something with a bang or like get that little like boost of energy, aka just do the damn thing. This full moon feels really like here it is. (laughs) Mm. I'm hoping that that's what we all get. Um, I don't know if do you feel like that, Kristen? Are you kind of like, look excited to have that little boost of energy? Yeah, definitely. Like it feels like with the month bookended like that, yeah. like this month is going to be full of activity. Yeah, exactly. Like I have that kind of like eager, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like let's get into it feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and Aries rules the emperor in the tarot. And so when I think about that sign in particular, I really think about like getting to know and working with and owning our like inner authority and like seeing ourselves as leaders and worthy of taking up space. Um, And so it's a really good time to, you know, step into the new month with that energy and have that kind of confidence, work on your like personal sovereignty and boundaries and like build self trust, which again, like, who doesn't want to have a little bit more of all those things? (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And also this moon is going to be it's the harvest moon. So for Ooh. several evenings, the moonrise comes shortly after sunset, which means there's going to be an abundance of bright moonlight early in the evening, which traditionally was an aid to farmers and crews harvesting their crops, which is why it's called the harvest moon. So it'll rise about 30 minutes after sunset several days in a row, as opposed to its usual 50, 50, 50, not 15, 50 minutes <laughs> um, for reasons that have to do with science, which we won't get into, but it's that's the way it happens. So <laughs> the amount of light that that early will make it feel like there's a full moon for a few days in a row. So it's like that extra active Ooh. energy. Yes. I'm definitely going to go back to our practice. Well, the practice that you brought to everyone during summer camp of like making the full moon water and like mm. charging that. I feel like this is a really powerful one. And I have a few plants that are hanging out that feel like they could use some harvest moon Aries energy. <laughs> they <laughs> they need some, some cosmic love. So <laughs> maybe I'll, yeah, leave it out for a couple of days to get all that extra light. Yeah. You know what? That's a good idea. I still have the full moon water from the one that, uh, from that episode that you talked about. Yeah. Um, It's literally right next to me right now, (laughs) but I'm thinking what else you could do is put your crystals out as well and Mm. put that in the soil and make it extra. Cause I'm a person that has 
like no green thumbs. I don't have any thumbs at all. I don't have any hands. (laughs) 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 So maybe that could give my poor plant an extra boost. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) I'll let you know. (laughs) Yes. Oh my God. Incredible. You know what else happens this week? What? It's October 1st. So it's spooky season. Oh my God. Yes. I love it. (laughs) You love a spooky season. I I feel like it's like rubbing off on me. Like I'm not usually an October person, but I'm like, Ooh, that it sounds fun when you talk about it. It is fun. (laughs) It is so much fun. And the way, like what I like to do through all of October, October is watch a lot of scary movies, even, Mm -hmm. even if they're like goofy, scary, like really kitschy. I love that stuff. That is my favorite genre of scary movie is like, I live for like, I know what you did last summer and scream and like the nineties, like slasher Mm. vibe. That's kind of my vibe usually also just because like Nev Campbell, yeah, the the Nev Campbell (laughs) of it all is really important to me. (laughs) Nineties icon. Um, yes. And I will say I'm like, I always like want to watch scary movies so badly, especially like in the last couple of years where there's been a few that have been, um, you know, like culturally very important, you know, like Midsummer and, um, you know, all anything that Jordan Peele touches like, yes. He's, so, they're so good. Yeah. Like, and so I've, you know, I, I will watch them cause I, I like them in the moment, but they do ruin my life. <laughs> I do I do have a hard time like sleeping. Well, <laughs> Midsummer was just fucked up. <laughs> sure. But I also, I mean, I it's hard. I watch, I mean, I watch a lot of movies and most of them are just gory, but mm. one movie that really like actually scared the shit out of me, which doesn't happen often, was The Conjuring. And I thought that was one of the scariest movies that I've seen in a really long time. Have you seen it? I have not. And I mm. will not be seeing it. Oh, come <laughs> on. No. Piss your pants Honestly, with me. <laughs> Honestly, here's the problem, though, is it's like during it, I'm like, okay, like, I mean, during it, I have my hand over my face basically the whole time. So I'm barely even watching it. But <laughs> then I just like will not, like I'll have nightmares and like our laundry is in the basement. So then Dean ends up having to do laundry for three months because I just like refuse to go down there because I'm scared of getting murdered. <laughs> so it just really has a spiral effect. <laughs> well, what about you? What else do you do? So are there movies that you like definitely watch every year or do you kind of look for new ones? What's your approach here? <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say that there's any that, that are like, oh, I have to watch this every single year. Um, but we always try to find like new and different ones. They're always like indie movies, which are really like low budget, like (laughs) like, very kitschy. The one that stands out in my mind is, um, it was called the fun house massacre. Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's what it was called. And the, these five serial killers escaped from an asylum and hid in the fun house. And like, people thought that they were part of the attraction. And oh my God. They all died. <laughs> sure. Classic trope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely like one of those kitschy kind of movies. Um, but I don't know. We try to watch different ones all the time. Um, yeah. But the, the funnier ones are, they're obviously more enjoyable, but I do like ones that are really surprisingly scary. Yeah. So if you have any recommendations, definitely let me know. Yeah. Listeners, listeners, let us know. I'm definitely not Janine. She's too scared. You know, I'm a, I'm chicken shit. So any recommendation (laughs) I would have would be lame. I'll actually, you know what? I'm, I don't know if my sister listens to the podcast, but my sister loves scary movies. So I'll, I'll see if she has any good ones. And she's like queen of being like, Oh yeah, I've seen that. It's not even that scary. And I'm like, what? (laughs) I had nightmares for a week. Yeah. I mean, if I were watching them by myself, that would be one thing, but luckily I watch them with Dan and I'm like safe knowing that he's in the house. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, and I mean, what about the beginning of the month in general? Like what do we got for numerology this month before we piss our pants (laughs) being scared? (laughs) Yes. Um, October is a five month for 2020. So five is a number of personal freedom and curiosity. And there are a lot 
of directions that that can go. <laughs> it yes. can lead you to adventure, new opportunities, travel, maybe not so much geographic travel this year. Maybe there's movement and growth for you otherwise. Maybe maybe astral travel can be your thing this time. Hell yeah. Um, but on the other hand, there could be, you know, boredom in your current state or a lack of focus because you're interested in trying too many things, you know, and that lack of focus could also lead to some unnecessary drama or feelings of overwhelm. You know, if that freedom comes upon some boundaries, um, if that freedom leads you to overscheduling yourself or, um, being a little too free with your words for some people, <laughs> um, you know, just, <laughs> Just knowing that that's a possibility can help you be more conscious of your decisions this month so you can avoid any unnecessary annoyances. And I think otherwise that this could be a really fun month and there's a lot of opportunity for excitement in exploring your own personal pleasures and interests. And, you know, maybe it will bring you something new and fun. And I'm curious, Janine, to hear your thoughts on this because the fives in the tarot align with this a little bit with their focus on changing conflict, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the fives are a little tough. Like, I think that they get a bad rap, you know, like anything. It's not like the one that pops up that you're like, oh, yes, five <laughs> of cups. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> like, they always feel like um, a mirror to sort of remind you that, like, you're really, you're kind of in the thick of it in the fives, right? Like, they represent the part of the journey that, like you said, they it involves transformation. It can feel a little bit uncomfortable. Oftentimes, they are the contraction before the expansion in many ways. So like the – I wrote a newsletter about this recently where it's like that point where you're like just at your wit's end and you really feel like this is the moment where you want to quit is like right before things get good, right? Like we all have those experiences with our own – creative projects or like in, you know, at work or in relationships or things like that, there can be a lot of those moments. And so the fives are obviously, I mean, I think thinking about October, especially and the way that it's bookended by these full moons, it's leading up to this super important election. We're in month seven of a pandemic. There are ongoing mm -hmm. protests. We have, you know, all of these unbelievable climate disasters happening. Like there is a lot of contraction around us, even just going into the month. So I think that, you know, not to be all doom and gloom about it and be, cause I don't believe that the fives are, I don't believe that any tarot card is like a negative energy, but the fives really show us actually that we have grit and they show us where we have power and where we have choice. And they put us back into that place through these experiences that maybe don't feel that good, but are, they're necessary. They're part of life. There's just like no avoiding them. And so in a lot of ways, I feel like they illuminate our ability to kind of like weather, weather the storms. And so I like that you, um, kind of talk about like boundaries here and like boredom and like, I don't know, even you saying something about, um, like boredom, like not getting to a place where you're feeling destructive because the fives can very easily turn that way. Um, but being able to kind of st sit with what is uncomfortable in order to use it to transform rather than like being so turned off by the idea of being in a tough moment that you like project all of that anger somewhere else. Does that make sense? I don't know yes. if that was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think what you said, weather the storm, that's probably the theme of October yeah. or like, like the rest of the year. <laughs> I <laughs> Waiting out 2020. Like I feel pretty weathered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I do think that, yeah, like you said, it's kind of, there's just this moment. I, I really think that there's just a moment of having choice and being able to see both sides of, um, you know, either feeling defeated and letting that letting that mindset run us or feeling you know motivated to make change and let's hope that we all have the motivation to make change yeah. instead of you know displace you know just like dissociating <laughs> <laughs> but, especially on November 3rd yeah, yeah 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 so register to vote um but the beauty of this episode is that we go from that 
just pep talk that I just gave everyone <laughs> um, to talk to one of the most sparkly, magical, incredible humans, Sarah Potter. Like I, that conversation was amazing. I'm obsessed with her. Yeah. She's just, she's a burst of light. I love talking to her. She's always so calm and comforting and, and sweet and fun to talk to. I could yeah. just I gush over her all day. <laughs> I know. Like I kind of, I mean, obviously y'all are about to listen to the interview, but I just want to say like, it was such a joy and, you know, at a time where I think everyone's feeling a little overwhelmed, a little disempowered, a little burnt out. Like I think that some of the work that Sarah does and is so generous with is really, really like a powerful thing for all of us to kind of incorporate into our practice by like using colors and regarding colors as sacred and magical. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And this, I think it's really important that everything we talked about was really practical. And yes. I mean, that's, that's kind of what we focus on because both of us, that's what we're interested in, <laughs> you yeah. know, like that we don't, it's difficult for us to incorporate anything that's a little too flighty. Cause it just like, it doesn't fit with our life. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we talk a lot about the different ways that you can use color in your life for creativity, intention, manifestation, um, working with the moon and colors and yeah, lots of different amazing ways that you can incorporate that into your life. Yes. We also like go on what could have been an entire episode about communicating with animals and other living yes. beings, which is rad. I I could have talked about that all day. I was so interested. <laughs> it's so awesome. Hey everyone, Kristen here. Just wanted to take a quick pause from the show to invite you to my free workshop on September 30th. We're going to be talking about the patriarchy versus your body, how to take back your reproductive freedom from the patriarchy, reduce PMS symptoms, and superpower your menstrual cycle. In the live workshop, we're going to cover how our health and hormones are impacted by patriarchal standards of living, including the lack of education there is around menstruators' bodies in science and medicine. We'll talk about why diet culture and emotional eating are feminist issues. And then finally, it's not all rage-inducing, we're going to talk about what you can do to leave all that behind, live cyclically, and tend to your body's unique needs. The goal of this workshop is ultimately to help you understand how you can embrace your own inner power and align your life with the flow of your menstrual cycle and really implement a lot of what you've learned on this podcast too. So I'm really excited for this workshop and would love to see you there. Yes, you talking to you, my lovely podcast listener, and you can sign up for the workshop at goodwitchkitchen.net slash workshop. It's happening September 30th at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and I'd love for you to be there live to get the most out of it. But if you can't, no worries. You can still smash the patriarchy at your convenience because I will send a recording. So sign up goodwitchkitchen.net slash workshop. There'll be a link in the show notes, and I will see you there. Back to the show. Sarah Potter, she's a professional witch, tarot reader, and practitioner of color magic, a means of using specific hues of the rainbow to conjure different energies and manifest personal transformation. Working with both private and corporate clients, Sarah has shared the magic of color and tarot with thousands of clients over the years to promote self-empowerment, problem solving, and amplified intuitive skills through lectures, workshops, retreats, and one-on-one -on -one services. All right, welcome to the show, Sarah. Hi, thank you so much for having me. We're so excited that you're our first interview on the show. <gasps> I'm so honored. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we've been wanting to have you on for a while. I know we had a conversation a little bit uh, a little while ago about having you on, so I'm really glad that you're here. Um, so yeah, I think maybe we could just get started with having you tell people a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. So I work as a professional witch and tarot reader, and I also work a lot with the modality of color magic, which is tapping into the energy of different colors and using them in a very conscious, intention-driven way in our lives for self-empowerment and a stronger connection to our own intuition. Amazing. <laughs> what a job, right? Do you it love to get to job. say that? I really like that you started with a professional witch. I do. I do. It's a dream come true. I really, 
really love it. And I also write, I do weekly tarot scopes for astrology.com. And I also write for Cosmopolitan magazine. And it really is an absolute dream come true. That's amazing. So I'm curious, actually, in becoming a professional witch, like what is sort of your background and how did how did you get to this place where you're writing for cosmopolitan you're writing taroscopes for astrology.com you're yeah how did she get here <laughs> so i mean i was growing up in the 90s and i feel like we usually have that first spiritual awakening around the age of 12 and i wish i could say it was in this like spooky mystical mysterious place, but it was uh, really at the Barnes and Noble in my town in suburban New Jersey in that, you know, little witch section. Yes. (laughs) And I just really, like, that was my favorite part of the bookstore. And I just fell in love with all of these books and these covers. And I remember looking at all of these Silver Raven Wolf books And at this time, I was not aware of books that were marketed or targeted at like young people. So I was always reading these like very like adult witchcraft books that I don't know, I was just super into, but there's just so many amazing resources now. I I wish we had had those then, but you know, you do the best with what you can. Yeah. And I, I just think that was the vibe, you know, in the nineties, we had this resurgence of that new age from the seventies and I got my first tarot deck at the mall. Um, you bought it yourself. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, that is nonsense. <laughs> no, I know. To wait for someone to gift it to you. No, I just like. I don't agree with that either. No. Ugh, <laughs> shut it down. Everyone no, heard it if, here first. Sarah Potter right. Breaking officially. News. <laughs> Breaking news. I just, you know, let's not keep people from knowledge. Let's not be gatekeepers. Buy your tarot deck if you want to. And uh, yeah, I got it at the mall. It was this store that sold like incense and dragon sculptures and (laughs) like I have this visceral memory of being in this store I thought it was very cool they sold like tie-dye and like and then there was an there was the main part of the store and then there was an offshoot and there was a beaded curtain which like I thought was a very cool like interior design element at that age too and like you had to go through the beaded curtain and that was the back room and that's where they had all the tarot decks and uh and I just I can just like remember looking at all of the boxes and seeing that magician card. And I was like, I want to know what this is. And I want to know all of these secrets and how to use it. And I was always trying to divine as a kid. Like I was definitely one of those children who saw ghosts and was talking to spirits and animals and just didn't realize that not everyone was doing that. And I just was like, I was always communicating with people in other realms and, and people had passed on. And I just thought this is what you did. So I was always like, you know, I would drink tea with my grandma and then be seeing the shapes and the tea leaves. And then, you know, asking people to look at their hands and read their palms. I had no idea what I was doing with the palm reading. I was just like, Oh, like, you know, yeah. I, you just are so drawn to it. I wanted to uncover those secrets and connect with people. So yeah, it just, it, I, uh, my best friend in middle school, who's still one of my dearest friends, she was into that whole vibe too. So we would get books and share them together. And her mom taught us how to read cards. And it just, it started that very like magical, weird age. It was a really challenging time in my life, actually like school and socially. So to have that come in, kind of connect me to that power that you're looking for at that age. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that that's a really difficult age for a lot of people. And your, um, your description of that store is just, it's so vivid. Yes. Me too. I can can picture those kinds of stores. I can like smell it. I'm like, I know exactly the incense that are burning in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. That's part of the experience. (laughs) A real authentic mall dragon sculpture experience. So is there, I mean, you mentioned being able to communicate. I mean, is this something that has been in your family or is this something that you found on your own? Yeah, I actually, there's a lot of uh, psychics in my family, but I'm the only one who makes their living in this realm. So 
Uh, but yeah, it's definitely like, I do feel lucky in that way where it wasn't just like a uh, kind of weird outsider in the family. Like it was just totally normal. And like, it wasn't weird. And my intuition and psychic abilities were truly nurtured from a very, very young age. And the idea of being able to communicate and understand messages coming through in our dreams, like that was just part of how I grew up in like a very like mystical way with my mom. So I feel like I really treasure that experience because I know a lot of people did not have that same kind of situation growing up. Mm -hmm. And so I know I'm, I mentioned, I really wanted to ask you this question. So I know you, um, you, I heard you on a radio show talk about how you communicate with cats and I have so many questions about this. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you told, I think you told a story where you were in your friend's apartment and you were talking to the cat about the friend's apartment or something like that. Was that right? right? That's I'm yeah. sure. Yes. That sounds quite right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's amazing. But so I'm wondering like, are, are cats your animal of choice? Can you communicate with other animals? No, all animals. I mean, all energy animals. is energy. So I feel yeah. like if we're picking up on it, like, I'm sure you can too. Like, I don't know. I feel like, like we're all living beings and, and it's just, yeah, it's energy is energy. And I guess I also, I, I will admit, like, I really find it challenging to believe that not everyone's living like this, like as me, like the, in the same experience where I'm just like, what do you mean? Like, it's so clear to me what they're saying. And so a couple of friends have been really patient with me and they're like, no, this is just not how everyone is living, but <laughs> that's okay. But yeah, I think I mean, cats are really funny. I mean, you know, they have such big personalities and that, that comes through. And I I quite enjoy those readings, but it does, it, it is kind of a challenge sometimes because I'm doing those readings for, you know, their, their roommate, their owner, if you will. Yeah. Um, and sometimes the messages can be really harsh. So I always have to warn <laughs> people like, Hey, That's this is cat. not coming from me. I am just the messenger, but totally. And again, you're the human. So that's up to you too, how you work out. Like you don't have to do everything the cat says, but yeah. You well, know. I mean, I imagine <laughs> if you're a being that hasn't had a voice in a situation, like a living situation, like, yeah, you might be yeah. pissed as hell. When, like someone's yeah, finally said, like, why are you not eating? And you're like, well, I've been hunger striking because of this situation. Like exactly. I would be pissed too. <laughs> yes. Well, and I find like a lot of times like I'll come in because there's a, like a disagreement or like something. Behavioral. Yeah. Something. And it's like, yeah. well you know, you moved your boyfriend into the house, which you have every right to do, Sure, but you didn't ask this other being that you share a space with. And so they're insulted. And like, oh, I think like, Hey, so like if it was the other way around, they'd be insulted too. Cause I feel like a lot of them take ownership of the home. It's their home as well. So I feel like a lot of times, like anyone who's sharing a space, there's miscommunications. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so interesting. I love that. I actually yeah. have right? to ask, it'll have to happen not on this podcast. Cause this could totally turn into like a spooky cat episode, but I, I don't even, Kristen, I've told you about our ghost cat, right? Like there's definitely no. a ghost cat in my apartment. No. Oh amazing. my God. We don't have to get into the whole thing. Although it's pretty, essentially it's not even a whole thing. There just like is a ghost cat in this apartment. And my husband and I both see him or her and like we didn't talk about it for like 18 months and then I was like drunk at dinner one night and I was like with friends and I was like you guys Dean will think I'm crazy but we have a ghost cat and he was like you see it too and I was like <gasps> it was a really oh my God. good moment but yes. I'd be curious to I might have to ask you I'm, we might have to do a ghost cat reading at some point amazing <laughs> I would love to anytime we'll set it up <laughs> my aunt has a ghost cat too there's the you know, fuck? they're around. I think just spooky like cat season. This, yeah. Um, <laughs> just hearing that, I feel like it must be like comforting to be able to understand other beings, you know? Um, I don't know. That just uh, listening to you explain that just felt really comforting to me. <laughs> oh, I'm happy to hear that. You know, when I went to when I moved to college, that was the first time I lived outside of my parents' homes that I grew up in. And I actually found that experience to be so uncomfortable because I was so used to all of the 
like spirits in the homes that I grew up in. And there was like, I'm going to tell you like the dorm at Northeastern that I was in my freshman year, no ghosts. Like there was just like, it was a very weird energy. I didn't know you went to Northeastern too. I did. I went for one year and then I just was not cut out for business school. I switched to art school. <laughs> but probably because I was in the dorms looking for the ghost all the time. <laughs> it's like too new. Class. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was, it's like very, like, that was a very viscerally uncomfortable experience. Wow. And I remember trying to tell my roommate, like, I'm, I can't sleep here. There's just not like the spirits I grew up with and everything. And she was like, well, okay. <laughs> but, but like, you know, at least you can, ar- I think that that's it too. And like you said, kind of to your point of saying that, you know, it's all energy. Like, I think that you obviously have honed the skill of being able to like articulate what that energy is. And mm-hmm. oftentimes we do, and we are aware of that. We enter rooms and we feel uncomfortable and we don't know why, or we like, no, yes. we can sense when someone's looking at us or when there's like, you walk into a room and there's tension. And so, I mean, good on you for being able to articulate, like, this is just weird. Cause it doesn't have the same spirit that my home had. And like, that's what homesickness is in a way. Totally. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I yeah. I really like the way that you reflected that. That's really cool. Oh, love it already. <laughs> Haven't even gotten to color <laughs> magic. Yeah, yeah, I, know, right? yeah. I know we could ask you so many questions about that, but I know uh, we <laughs> definitely want to talk about color magic. So that's one of your many magical titles, practitioner of color magic. So could you tell people a little bit more about what that is and how you work that into your practice and your business? Yes. So every color holds a specific energy or vibration. And when we use these colors intentionally, I feel like they can bolster our strengths or support our weaknesses. And I just want everyone to understand the magic that is at our fingertips. And this is a modality that we're already working with. I feel like thinking about your favorite color or your least favorite color, what you're calling in, what you are opposed to, noticing colors. Like I always feel like a color's coming at me in succession and being aware of these messages. Like what do I need to focus on? How can I help myself or how can I use the magic of a color as an ally to support me? And this is something that we're engaging with already. I feel like brands, marketing, businesses, they're already using this. And I feel like once we know what's going on, the spell is broken and we have this awareness because it's so important to see the truth. And that's what I really love about color magic as well. Ooh, I love that. The idea of like, yeah, demystifying, but also mm. re-empowering in a way. Like Totally. Well, because I feel like, you know, and we can engage with the magic of color in so many different ways through adornment, uh, personal or our homes, through the food we eat. Uh, if you like to, I like to paint my nails different colors, depending on what I'm inviting in or other kinds of kind of glamour magic, if you will. You always have the best nails. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. It's truly like, that's like my little pleasure relaxation is getting my nails done. I really enjoy that. But, um, you can simply do color breathing exercises or color visualizations and meditations, which requires nothing else besides yourself. And I think the reminder of self-possessed power is so important and being able to work with color in such an intuitively guided way, but also like I'm always happy to assist and help to kind of demystify or point in the direction of how to use color in the way that you want to to honestly like manifest all of your desires. No big deal. Just no big that. deal. You know. I don't know. And like honestly like I I changed my entire life through this modality. So I know it works because I lived it. I do live it now. So, and I want to help other people because like this really, really helped me transform my life. I mean, what is it that, what is it that changed for you? Yeah. Once you started using this. I think this is an, and this is such an amazing example of practical magic. 
And I really think that no matter what it is we're talking about, when I'm working with clients, a lot of times there's uh, issues with inspiration, with love, with money, self-worth. At the end of the day, a lot of these things connect to communication and how do we communicate and how do we make ourselves feel? And then how do we project that to other people and how do we make it known? And so there is literally like a color for every situation. And I just feel like, you know, I know I say it again, but it's all about empowerment and we can do this through color. And I feel like I really needed to work on my communication skills to get myself out of a really toxic work environment with relationships that were also toxic. And I made my whole focus on this color blue, which is like activating our throat chakra, increasing truth and communication. And that's where it began. And then I started moving through all of the different colors. Mm. Oh, I love that. So you kind of progressively like chose where to start and you, did you intuitively kind of move through? Did you, how did yes, you go from one to the next? Totally intuitive. Cool. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, I love the the visualizations that you mentioned because so we Janine and I um, both were at the event where you and I met um, at the Cauldron and uh, Cauldron's event where you did this color magic a version of your color magic workshop where you did the visualizations and the, you led us through a meditation and I think about that meditation all the time just because just the way it was I mean I. I think just you, your presence in general is comforting to me. <laughs> Aww, that's just because the way, the way you had said, you talked about like visualizing a garden in your head and that you can come back to this garden anytime that you want. And that stuck out to me so much and was just really helpful. And I know we were focusing on the color orange that day. And I just constantly think about that. <laughs> um, oh yeah. my gosh. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah. So you lead, you lead color magic workshops. Is that something, are you doing that virtually now or is this something? You know, I've been doing my color magic meditations virtually, but I haven't done the workshop virtually. I think that's something that I'll probably do in the new year just because there's such, I feel so inundated by zoom and I feel like it's wonderful. I love that there's so many opportunities to create community in this way, but I just haven't been at a point where I can be facilitating that right now, but in the new year, I'd like to do that and really make that a priority. But yeah, I think it's, I I just, something that I think is so important is I just hate this idea of gatekeepers. Like, I feel like we, like, I absolutely believe in education and uh, and sharing knowledge and people need to be paid for that. But I don't like this idea of like, well, you need me to do that for you or with you. Like, Mm -hmm. no, these are the tools and now you use them. Right. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, what a great way to go into any kind of educational, even if you are leading a workshop to just kind of have that mentality behind you, I feel like changes the entire energy of that like energetic exchange, you know, where you're like, there isn't a gatekeeping mentality. And I think that's probably why people are so attracted to a the work that you do, but also how I feel like impactful and um, how not that it, whatever, not that it's like spread necessarily, like, everyone in the world is doing color magic. But I think that I, I would agree with you, Kristen, like, I think about that meditation a lot. And just like the add the effects, the ripple effects of like your energy is really cool to think about. Whoa. Oh my <laughs> gosh. That really made my day. Oh, that really warmed good. my whole heart. Wow. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you. Yeah. No. Well, also course. your work, I mean, your work speaks to, I mean, what you do actually, it does work because I do remember, um, another event where I, t- I had told you, I'm like, you, you are like yellow to me. Like, I, I just feel that you're yellow and you're like, that's what I've been working on. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so it does. I mean, it, it emanates from you and the work that you do. And I mean, you are, I think one of the only people I know who are doing this. So I'm sure there's um, others, but I love your approach. Definitely. <gasps> Thank um, you. Yeah, so we we love to talk about self care on this podcast. Love and, it. And um, like you mentioned, you chose blue and kind of went through the colors. But is there? We want to talk about your perspective on the color wheel in particular, like as its own thing, and um, and, and 
Do you move through the colors in a certain way, like as they appear on the color wheel? What is your perspective on that in terms of like self-care? So what I really love about the color wheel is that the colors, if we're focusing on one shade, like let's say we're looking at orange and on either side, we have red and yellow and orange is going to have a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow, but then it's also going to have its own correspondences that it resonates with. And so I think it's a really nice way to move through it and kind of like start like at the, with the rainbow, like red, and then keep going and see how you shift as you get to each color. And I feel like I always start my day with like, okay, like, well, what am I feeling today? Or what is my intention today? Or what's on my schedule? And how can I um, assist myself through the magic of color? I really do this every day, I swear. And, um, and so that's why I don't really necessarily move like through each color every day. I'd like to see where it takes me intuitively and practically. So, and then when, like to go back to the color wheel, I feel like red, orange, yellow, these are a lot more, I like to call them like uppers, like they kind of get us going. They're more invigorating. I feel like these are more social colors. Green is is kind of a magical neutral. We can always add green into the equation. And then blue, indigo, purple, these are more cooler colors. They calm us down. Uh, They're more introspective, more spiritual. So kind of depending on what the vibe is, is kind of which part of the color wheel we'll start with for the work. That's really interesting. I think that's, we talk about that a lot, obviously, with like cycles and kind of like masculine and feminine energy and like the, just that balance too of like, I think that what's interesting, because I think about this from a cyclical perspective, and I'd be interested if you ever do this with clients or with yourself or um, from a color perspective of like, okay, I'm here, like I'm in a blue and my day is actually going to require me to be at like yellow. So like how, what kind of bridge can I, I don't know, maybe that feels like way too structured, but like, I, I think about that for myself when I'm like, oh wow. Like today I was just telling Kristen before you got on, I had some client calls. I was like, I have very little energy. I am going to do this from bed. They don't know where I am. I'm going to be like as comfortable as possible because like for this throat chakra to open, like I got to be tender as hell. So I'd be interested like how the relationship between colors and when you want to work with one, but you identify that you're in another. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Well, one thing is I think like just honor where you're at, I think is really important. And so And what I think is really funny is that like, I don't believe in coincidences. So I think like you chose blue and yellow in a way that makes sense because both of those colors are about truth, clarity, and communication, kind of an an illumination. So like using that as an example, I would just say like, if you're at blue and you're trying to get to yellow, like I would probably just say like, take a walk in the sunshine and feel the sun on your face and just kind of get into nature, breathe in some fresh air. And, and allow that sun to kind of uplift you and bring you to more yellow out of that kind of blue, which is like cooler and just a little bit, I don't know, to me, it's like a calmer place, whereas yellow is more activated and bright and energetic, maybe more public facing, like you said, right. talking to a client. Yeah. I just think that's so interesting to think about. And like you said, I mean, very, very practical. Like we all have relationships with color like in our day-to-day life that we don't even think about? Do you run into that a lot where you're like, you're already doing it? (laughs) Oh yeah, like constantly, totally, all of the time. That's super cool. Yeah, that's why in my workshop, I always start with having everyone introduce themselves and say their favorite color and their least favorite color. And we get into why that's how we start because I find that what our favorite color is often the energy that we're comfortable in or what we're currently sitting in or... Uh, currently focused on. And then our least favorite color is usually what we're pushing away or have an aversion to, but we also need to in turn invite in. Oh, wow. Right. So does your favorite color tend to change regularly? It does. And it doesn't like, I feel like I pink is always like my primary favorite color, but then I feel like my second runner up favorite color (laughs) kind of shifts a lot. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're all competing for your for the top I spot. <laughs> I love them all. I love them all. But I, I don't love brown. I'll be the first to admit. That one's a very challenging one for me to love. But what is that? I what is the energy it. of brown? So it's funny. Like brown is like very grounded and it's home. And when I was taught, when I was really like, doing a lot of lectures and workshops like I was traveling all of the time so it's like that kind of makes sense that I'm like not home very much or I'd be home for a couple of days and I'd fly somewhere else um and I was like yeah that actually makes a lot of sense and now I've just been home for months like all of us <laughs> and I was like huh I still don't like brown still not for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I don't know. I do feel like I, I'm very grounded. So I'd still, you know, there's still things that I'm understanding about that color. I mean, I don't hate it. I just am like, sure. I don't, yeah, if you're like, if really you're gonna ask my in. least favorite, then I'll pick right. One, but I don't I have to choose. Yeah, sorry, Brown, it's you. But sorry, you know. bud. I know. So I know you kind of, you incorporate a lot of color into your appearance with your clothes, makeup, hair, um, nails, love the nails. Um, so for people like me <laughs> yes. who just wear black all the time, how, like, what are other ways that we can incorporate color into our lives if we're not super comfortable having it on ourselves? Okay. Well, a lot of my clients who do wear mostly all black, and also I used to wear all black every day. I didn't own any color. So I always say if I can start wearing color, literally anyone can. Um, but a lot of my clients like to wear like colorful undergarments, which I think is really sweet because it's kind of like a secret and you know, <laughs> it's there, but I also feel like, um, I love to work with flowers and especially when it comes to our interior lives and home decor, I did one workshop where it was a Thursday evening and someone emailed me. I got the email the next morning and she had gone home and repainted her kitchen after the workshop. And I was like, whoa, like you win, <laughs> like, like that is the most dedicated that. attendee I've ever found. Most of us, I think, do not have that, um, I don't know, commitment level, I guess, or like, <laughs> she's like, I bought in. I bought in hard yeah, <laughs> in it. And I was like, that is amazing. Um, but what I like to do is like bring in a floral arrangement because flowers can have such a big impact on a space or a room. See how that color makes you feel. If you're really enjoying it, you could kind of invest in something else, whether it's like a throw blanket or bedding or, you know, go full force and start painting the walls. But, um, <laughs> another thing is like, I love a bath ritual. So you can bring mm -hmm. that color into the bath, whether it's through, Again, like floral uh, petals or salts, um, but you could also do these meditations and visualization techniques there. So I think that's a great way. Also, I mean, the food you eat. I think it's always wonderful to eat a balanced diet by eating through the rainbow. And that's a great way to bring the magic of color in and feel its effects pretty quickly. Yeah, I love that. Um, we talk a lot about changing up our self-care with the moon phases, with certain seasons. Do you use different colors for these things, different moon phases and seasons? Do those change throughout oh, totally. the year? Yeah. Totally. So I feel like with the seasons, a lot of times it can just be looking at nature. I think nature is the greatest inspiration and seeing what colors are in your environment and what feels right. I also feel like winter, we're usually getting pretty introspective, going within. I would do a lot of more of those cooler colors, darker tones, things that are going to be kind of calming, create a space for quiet and reflection. Whereas summer, we're usually more active, socializing. We're inviting in the sun. Maybe, you know, I grew up on the Jersey Shore. It's the ocean. Uh, it's the sand. Bringing in those kind of tones to really create uh, like a color prescription palette, if you will, to work with. And I think that like just paying attention with the rhythms and cycles of nature, there's colors that complement that and it's evident everywhere you look. Um, and then I also like, I also love working with different colors for the moon cycle. And I find that pretty consistently there are colors that work. Like I feel like we have this new moon in Virgo and on the new moon, we're planting intentions. 
we're setting new goals, we've gotten clarity. I always feel that green is a great color for the new moon because we're just nurturing something new, something fresh. And then, I don't know, is it okay if I go through the moon cycle? Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then- It's our favorite also, topic. Okay, I mean, I mean, mine too. I love it. Uh, but, and I also should say, you know, sometimes I kind of tweak this a little bit depending on where the moon is new or, or where it's full. But for the most part, I say like on a new moon, I'm working with green. Um, when the moon is waxing and it's getting bigger, we're kind of putting our plants into action. Like that's when we want a more activated color in our magic, which I'd say like red is a great time to bring that in. Red, maybe even some orange. Um, when the moon is full, we have this illumination, this realization of our magic. And I always feel like silver is always connected to lunar energy, but we could also kind of do some yellow or even bring in green again. So green is always appropriate. So <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that as a general rule, just like, right? it's just a nice, when in doubt. yeah, when yeah, in doubt, just go green, go green. Love it. <laughs> Um, okay. So then moving through, so now the moon's waning, we're getting a little smaller, we're reflecting. Uh, this is a great time for renewal, for rest. And that's when we're going to bring in Brown. See, I do, I work with Brown. It's just like, uh, but I could also like, (laughs) it's like, sorry, Brown. I do love you. I do love you. I do love you. I include you. I celebrate you. But, um, we could also bring an indigo which is kind of a very visionary color. I feel like it's, uh, it complements that brown grounded energy very well. And then when we're in that dark moon phase, we have this release, we have clarity. Um, we can have like a lot of psychic vision coming through. And that's when I'd work with darker tones like black, uh, purple, dark blue, like those kinds of, uh, of colors before starting again when the moon is new. Oh, I love that. That's me too. I'm like taking notes here because this is, I mean, like, I can like see the top of your pen. Such a little Virgo. Amazing. Amazing. (laughs) Well, I mean, we do, we, we, we always talk about the different rituals and different self care things that we do at each moon phase. And I just, this is just another layer to add to it. And I'm excited to read that. Yeah. Amazing. Yes. That's what I think is so great about color magic is you can amplify whatever you're doing with another layer of meaning. Yeah. And I think it helps like for a lot of people, we talk about this a lot, like where it can feel really overwhelming when you're like starting to get into ritual practice or working with cycles or working with color magic or anything. And it's like some people just like, I understand this completely, like want the answer. And it's like, sometimes it's nice to be able to be like, okay, like here's a start here, start with green for now, even if you're not sure yet, like, and kind of see the results or I don't know, that just feels really practical, which again, I tend to like, (laughs) I have decision fatigue, I guess right now. So Uh, I'm like, just tell me what to do. (laughs) For real. Okay. I'll make a little recording of myself that says pick green. (laughs) (laughs) It's green. I want just like a button or like, that's what you need, Sarah. You need an app that you can just, someone can go to and it can be you being like pink. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Like roll the dice. I would love that. It was so funny. I, um, I was talking to a girlfriend the other day and we were obsessing over the magic eight ball because, and like, we were like, we need to know all about the magic eight ball. Who invented it? Where did it come from? What is this divination situation? So if I could be like a magic eight ball and like my face floats up and I'm like, (laughs) like, wouldn't that be amazing? I love it. I'm picturing it. I would shake it. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks. I'm picturing it. It's holographic. It's sparkly. It's all perfectly you. (laughs) Oh my God. Beautiful. Amazing. Okay. If you had merch, that would be perfect. (laughs) Add it to the list. I need that. All right. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Make it happen. Oh my God. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. What color are you working with right now? Like what's your, for your personal self-care at the moment, what kind of feels like it's been supporting you? All week it's been green. That's why I can't stop talking about it. Like She's having a love affair with green and it's just. Totally. Yeah. No, it was just funny. Like I, um, I kept thinking about Malachite like in Balakite kept like jumping into my brain and I, and then it was funny. I actually posted about this on Instagram and then I pulled out my friend Vanessa Cuccia's crystal healing book and it literally opened to the Malachite page. 
And I was like, okay, like, I feel you. And then I was like, and I'm looking at it as I'm like eating my lunch that I had just made that was like kale and broccoli and rice. And I was like, what the hell is going And like, you know, like I really do like live this, but um, yeah. And I just think it's that new moon in Virgo and everything that's been coming through to me, you know, in, in my own meditations, in my own card pulls, in readings with clients the past week and a half has just been stressing the importance of our hearts, about acceptance for ourselves, about self-love and really honoring, you know, self-care, which you guys have been talking about and just really prioritizing that, especially considering everything that's happening in the world. I personally, like, I always want to be of service and I want to be as strong as I possibly can and be fortified so that I can show up for my clients. And that means I really have to take care of myself. And green just is such a good nurturing element. You know, I am, um, I fantasize about being this like plant person. I'm just having this like whole jungle in my apartment and I kill all of my plants and this very like sweet company sent me a plant as a gift. And I was like, Oh, like I'm going to kill that. But thank you. That's so generous. And I've actually like, I, I named the plant after my cousin that I'm like very close to. Oh my God. So and sweet. which is like such a great sympathetic magic trick is to like name your plants after people you care about and check in on them and nurture them. Mm, and, uh, and I, I talk to my cousin almost every day and I call my plant, plant Vanessa. And then I call my cousin just <laughs> Vanessa. And I'm like, oh my God. I was like, plant Vanessa is thriving. And like, and I'm also like, oh my God, I can't kill plant Vanessa. Like this is going to yeah. be so bad to my family. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I have this lovely, like, I don't even know what kind of plant this is. Like, it's like a climbing, like dangly fern and she's just growing and thriving. And I put a little amethyst in her soil and she's wonderful. So I have that green energy and, um, a bunch of clients sent me flowers for my birthday. It was so sweet. So there is a lot of greenery here. And I just think green's a great compliment for pink and it's just so heart opening and just a wonderful ally. I feel like, especially right now, we all need a little more nurturing. Yes, definitely. (laughs) I'm like mesmerized. I feel like (laughs) I can't wait to just go. Yeah truly do an I'm gonna recreate your meditation with green later tonight for this oh my gosh new moon. that would be so nice <gasps> oh I love that yes oh my I, gosh and just yeah I don't know have a go to like a room. jungle or something yeah. yes go to a jungle <laughs> yeah, instead of a garden yeah oh beautiful I love it have a salad have oh. a <laughs> green juice and truly I love revel that. in it I love incorporating that into the food you eat too um Cause I, I mean, they always say like, eat the rainbow, but it's, it's for a different purpose, but you could also have it for like a metaphysical purpose. I love it. (laughs) Oh, it's so fun. So back when like we were socializing and like doing things like that, (laughs) um, a few of my girlfriends and I, we have color magic dinner parties Oh, I love and, that. And we each make a dish and then we all go to one person's apartment and we, we create, um, a dish based on the energy we want to bring to the group. And we've done this like multiple times. It's always like the same couple of us. And every time no one brings the same color and like no one winds up bringing the same color a second time and no one shows up with the same color. So it's like, we're just like really vibing and in sync. And our goal is we want to make a cookbook based on all of these recipes from these dinner parties, but it's so fun. And I just like, I can't wait. I really miss doing that. I can't wait to like, reignite that and it's so fun to like talk about what you're going through and like why you chose that color but also why you want to gift that color to the group and and like experimenting with different recipes and yeah it's just crazy like somehow everyone like someone brings an entree and an appetizer a salad a dessert it's just like oh my god magic 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 right it's really sweet it's so fun um, I'm like, what do I want to ask next? <laughs> There's like two anything. that I really want to ask. Well, I, I actually really appreciated your, and I think this will lead into the second one, but 
I was reading something. I think you wrote it maybe for Allure or one of the, you're in, you've been featured in many fine publications. So it was in one of those fine publications where you were talking about manifestation and kind of, I really just appreciate it. It was like the first quote that they had of you in there that you're like, spiritual bypassing is real and like just thinking a good thing doesn't make it happen. And I just was snapping away with you. And I just like really want to talk about creativity and color magic and manifest and how you use that to manifest through your actions, not just through like sitting in meditation and hoping that good things happen to you. Oh my God. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. You just like, like if meditate only. all day. Wow. I think the world's problems would be solved in 2020 if we had all (sighs) just been able to do that. (laughs) Right? Oh my gosh. Amazing. Well, I, I mean, I just feel like we all need to be active participants in our lives in whatever capacity we can be, but it just really, uh, like grates on my nerves, but I also think it's incredibly damaging to offer this kind of quote wisdom where it's like yeah you just have to like think happy thoughts and then happy things happen and you get what you want and like don't think anything bad and don't get angry and like no that's first of all it's not fair it's not realistic and it's harmful and I just feel like we all experience a wide range of emotions and they're all valid and uh anything that you do on the astral you must do it in the physical realm as well and I just feel like I feel like, hey, you can be really devoted to your meditation practice, but if you're being nasty and cold and uncaring and not generous in the physical world, I don't think your magic's going to get you very far. And so I really do feel like you be generous on the astral and be generous in the physical. So, you know, I feel like as far as my own kind of creative inspiration practice I feel like you know there is a portion of my well-being or my livelihood that is uh that hinges on my ability to be creative and to create and uh produce new content and write and you know I write a column every week and so part of what goes into it is that like nurturing I was talking about and trying to be as healthy as possible, get sleep, uh, eat well, I'm vegan, I'm sober, uh, I work out every day, I go running, and I try to keep like a small friend circle and and talk to friends every day and talk to my family and and check in and have really nurturing, supportive relationships that are two-way streets. And then when we and like also just managing my time really well, like that, like not over committing, understanding the importance of structure and a, and a calendar. I have a planner that I write in plus my Google calendar. Uh, Very Virgo imagine, of you. <laughs> it, it is. I know. Maybe that's Virgo. I, <laughs> but so I feel like there's so like magic is so multifaceted and uh, there's so much that happens before I even sit down at my laptop or I open my planner. Mm. I think that's really potent to as a reminder and same thing I think you've kind of touched on it a few times of like fortifying yourself so that you can be of service and kind of using your own whether it's you know color magic or any of the other ritual practices that you have or even just like exercise and diet and all those kind of things like to be able to yeah show up and sow the seed in the way that you want to show up down the line when that thing, that idea is manifesting or blooming or whatever you want to say. Totally. Well, and I want to feel like worthy of the opportunity and I want to feel like I can show up and I can follow through and, and accept that I I do feel like I, I deserve this and I accept it. And, um, but also what else can I do to create opportunities for others as well? Hmm. I really love that. Um, do you, I guess going from that, like personal creative kind of fortification, we were talking a little bit, um, about how you do a lot with like art curation and working with artists. Um, so just curious if there's any practical tips or rituals that you kind of 
recommend specifically to getting that creative cycle either started or supported beyond what you kind of just listed? So I am a big fan of meditation. I meditate in the morning by myself. Then Monday to Friday, I go to a meditation on Zoom every morning. And then um, and I meditate at night as well. So I feel like just having like a meditative practice is really great as a creative and as an artist. And meditation can take different forms. Like I also will take like a midday walk that's really like clears my head and that's meditative for me as well. But a kind of magical ritual that I think is really great for inspiration is in whatever space you create, whether it's your studio, your home, whatever it is at your desk. I like to really consciously and thoughtfully unpeel an orange very slowly and with intention. And I do have a little like magical incantation that goes with it to stay and you kind of just really experience that orange with all of your senses and slowly unpeel it and by the time the rind is unfurled you will be inspired oh I love that (laughs) (laughs) it's so good Yes. That's great. I know I really wanted to ask this, ask this question or I wanted to because um I am helping my best friend paint her new house this weekend and I we were wondering if there was like something that you would recommend to start before you know creating this whole new room for herself with this she's doing it in a dark purple like a very beautiful purple color. Ooh, okay, amazing. So Well, when I work with clients for their homes, I always say like, so what is the intention of this room? What is the purpose? What do you want to create? I think this is going to be like her, like not a man cave. It's like a lady cave. (laughs) I love that. Love it. Well, you know, what I love about purple is yes, it is highly intuitive. It taps into our dreams. But it's also very luxurious and it's the color of royalty. So this will be her true like queen's palace. Right? I think that's amazing. (laughs) Well, and I also feel like, you know, you can do some magic as you're painting and just kind of like put the intention into the paint. Like I will feel like the most glamorous queen whenever I'm in this room and you say it into the paint and then you paint it on the walls and you bring that intention magically into the room. Yeah, we'll do that. And I'll get her husband to do it too. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Everyone speak <laughs> right into that paint can. Yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh. oh, I love that. And I, yeah, I just love how like everything that you're saying obviously is like really magical and special. And like, I don't know, I definitely feel inspired but it's also like so like practical like in the sense of like it the the amount of time it takes you to say like set an intention before painting a room is like what five minutes you know like just like give yourself that permission to like slow down a little bit and like be really intentional with your color choices or like what color the mug is that you put coffee in in the morning like little things like that I know Kristen's talking about that Yes. Yeah, I, I did a, um, my class, I did potions with purpose. And I talked about, um, not just the ingredients that go into your cup for a manifestation, but also the vessel itself, what color that can be. Um, yes. So yeah. Uh, it's so important. That's so wonderful. So I know that you have, um, a new thing that you're going to be doing, I think coming up the color magic year ahead. Um, yes. That sounds really exciting. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I just thought this would be a really fun way to kind of like a play on the wheel of the year or like that idea of like a tarot reading where we do a card pull for every month. But instead, this service allows us to create um, an intuitive color wheel of the year for each individual person. And I just, I don't know, for me, like I love bringing divination into my everyday life, obviously, but I also love the gift of divination. And since the pandemic started, I've been doing so many like virtual birthday parties or readings. I did like so many readings for Mother's Day. And I just thought like I created this with the intention of it being a gift you give to yourself or to someone you love. 
And so when we worked together in that session, we intuitively pull the cards. We also talk about what kind of intention you're setting for the year overall. And then we create this like kind of allyship with each shade for each month and then give you a plan to work with throughout the year. That sounds amazing. (laughs) I'm excited. That sounds so fun. So yeah, what's kind of the process? You pull cards and how are you like select or I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, there's so many colors. Like, how do you? I know. <laughs> no, I have this like great deck that I love that's totally inspired by nature. Mm. And I mean, there's like 40 cards. And so each card is a different color. Ooh. So we'll do a meditation. We'll set the intention and then we'll pull the colors and then map it out. And then kind of like, just so we talked about too, like a kind of general way to inc- like work with color. And then you can kind of, as the year goes on, see what feels right when you bring in each color for that month. That is amazing. I, yeah, I really love, I get wheel of the year readings every year because they're, I do find them incredible, but sometimes I'm like, Oh, I really don't feel like this card right now. Like I'm in an (laughs) emperor month for September. I'm like, I do not feel like, (laughs) and I'm like, I, I mean, (laughs) The last thing I want in my life right now is like more emperor energy, but, um, I'm sure. Yeah. But I do feel like it's kind of, I don't know. I like the way that you obviously approach it in such a practical way and having it feel like, again, you're back in the driver's seat. Like you're really able to work with these colors in a way that feels empowered rather than feeling, um, like you're like, okay, you're going into a tower month. You're just like, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my like- God. That's like, I would be, and like, I get so obsessive. Like if I knew that, if I got a Wheel of the Year reading and I was like, all right, well, November is going to be a real tower month. I'd be thinking about it all year long. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Literally just count Oof. down to November. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. A tarot reader. But I would get <laughs> caught up in that. Yeah. 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 Ooh, hopefully, I feel like. I mean, everything, anything can be a challenge and, you know, but I think that maybe like, I feel like color is almost like a little bit of a a softer challenge in that way. Like, okay, November might be, I'm going to do it again, a brown month. So you're going to have to really connect with feeling grounded and at home and do what you can to feel more connected to the earth. Actually, that sounds lovely. So yeah, right. Right? it just feels good. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. So how are you, when are those start? I'm like, when can we book them? How do we book yeah. them? Tell everyone. Oh All right, All so things. I'm going to launch my new website. But right now, if you want to book a reading with me, you can just contact me on Instagram at I am Sarah Potter or send me an email, which is tarot with Sarah Potter at gmail.com. And that's the best way because then I can just set you up and get you on my calendar and just... Um, tell you a little bit more about the service if you're interested. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't. First of all, I can't wait to see the color magic of your new website. <gasps> oh my god, me too. It is sure it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I am psyched. It's probably so fun for a designer. I feel like a lot of yeah, a lot of designers have to stay very minimal, so it must be fun to like get to yeah. work on a magical, no. colorful website. Yes, I'm a Jersey girl still. Hell and yeah. I'm so Jersey. I'm like, more, more, more. Yeah. Like, how do we make it sparkle? Like, and then I want this like ghost to jump out at you and like have an eight ball shake it up and then like say, like, you're welcome. Yeah, it's like I'm dead. Be real <laughs> angel fire. Like, it's going to be so oh, good. God, I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> Literally, truly break the internet. I guess. It probably will. So I'm sorry if it crashes your hard drive, but you know what? That actually could magic. be great for me, for all of us. Like if yeah. <laughs> turn off our computers, yeah. you book a reading with me and all of your technology breaks. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would book. All right. Great. Not a guarantee, but a possible yeah. benefit. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Um, is there anything else, any other places that you want listeners to find you? Obviously they know how to book, but, and you mentioned your columns, where do you like to hang out on the internet? I guess. Oh my God. I try to not hang out on the internet. Actually. I think we could all use a little less internet time. Um, I mean, anywhere I go, I don't think you can find me. I read like the New York times daily briefing every morning, but like you probably can't connect with me there. 
Me in the comment section. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey guys, me again. I think what you're doing is really fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I just, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Both of those are, I am Sarah Potter, but I'm so visual. I really love Instagram. I hope you read my tarot scopes uh, at astrology.com. I do have an email list. So if you email me, I can add you to that. Um, I really love sending newsletters. I think that's like, I treat it like it's my family newsletter. <laughs> oh my God. So please add, add us. us. I okay, that. I will. I would love to. And um, yeah, that's usually where you find me. And I want to do, I'm going to be doing more color guided meditations. And I always announce those first on Instagram. So that's the best way to stay up to date on what's happening. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This is awesome. I loved having you. Yay. I love being here. You guys are great and your questions were wonderful. Oh, thank you. What a pleasure to be your guest. <laughs> that validation feels so nice. Thank you. Mm. Words, yeah. Words of affirmation, love language. Good. Yes. 100%. See? That's some pink and green energy for you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <Love it. laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. 